Hi, I'm CJ Altenberg with TransWest Truck Trailer RV in Frederick, Colorado. We appreciate you tuning in. Today we've got a special guest, Anthony Galvin with Cimarron Trailers here. How are you, Anthony? Doing well. Thanks for having us today. You bet. So behind us is a brand new 2023 Cimarron Lone Star 20-foot combo. Now we'll kind of get into this trailer and the options and kind of backstory on it. Let's take a look at the drawing first because I want to show you some specs of it so you kind of understand what we're looking at. Like I mentioned, 20 foot stock combo. So we have a 20 foot on the floor. We have a four foot front tack. This is the standard width, 610 wide and standard height, 71 tall. So that's kind of a background and kind of some layout of the trailer. Um, but Anthony, this is a unique trailer and I'll let you tell them why and the backstory on it. No, I appreciate it. And, and it is very unique in the fact that Cimarron is growing right now and how we're growing and taking care of our dealers that just need more product out there is we have actually added a second manufacturing facility in Manhattan, Kansas. This trailer is trailer number one out of that facility, okay? And out of that, we've got a lot, we're building stock combos, three and four horse goosenecks, two and three horse bumper pulls, those real popular using trailers that just everybody needs to use and do that. So this trailer is number one out of there. We're very excited about that. Uh, also, we've only taken over the facility the first part of April, CJ. Yeah. So in about 80 days, we're manufacturing trailers out mm -hmm. of there. Uh, so now, not only in Chickasha, Oklahoma, but now at our second manufacturing facility in, in Manhattan, Kansas, uh, allows us to offer more Cimarron products to our customers and dealers. Exactly. <clears throat> but you guys have standards. And with that being said, this is still a Cimarron. Very simple, and I cannot say it any differently. Uh, it is a second manufacturing facility. This is not a different trailer, a production type model trailer or that. It is a Cimarron trailer. And as we go through here, CJ is going to point out, we'll point out some things. It's the same floor. It's the same side post spacing and structure. It has the same roof. It has the same axle trolley. It is a Cimarron trailer just built in a different address. Yep. And, and with these models, we all kind of collaborated. You guys as the manufacturer, us as a dealer, other dealers. I mean, we all had our kind of input on how we option these trailers, how we want them to look, how we want them you know, as far as options on the trailer itself, so. And that's what we did is, is we went to our dealers and said, how do we want to spec these trailers out? What are the most popular options your customers are wanting? Mm -hmm. And so these trailers come standard with those options. So you're not paying extra for a step at the tack room door. You're not paying extra for a swing out mm -hmm. saddle rack. It comes standard on these models. So it's kind of unique in that fashion that literally when these things roll into their lot out of the factory, they're ready to go to work. Yeah, and this is a trailer, how it's set up is how we would normally order. Even if it was from Chickasha, we would take this model and we would do these add-ons to it to get this final product here. Absolutely, so. we feel like it's a perfect trailer for those people that may have the big living quarters trailer that they need a little runaround trailer or the, the, the roper going to the jackpots and just likes that stock combo to put things in. So uh, great trailers out there and we're excited now that that we're producing those trailers at our second facility and it's just going to get more of the great Cimarron product out on the road. That's right. We're excited about it. Let's walk you through how this trailer is optioned, uh, give you some background on, on again, how they're, how they're manufactured, the, the features, the benefits of each one of these. Like Anthony said, it's a stock combo. These stock combos are so versatile. You can haul horses, you can haul livestock, you can haul toys. You can do about anything you want with these. That's why they've become so popular and if we do get them in on trade, Boy, they're gone before we even kind of get them the lot is how it typically goes. But as we're looking underneath here, underneath the gooseneck, I mean, we just have a standard single leg bulldog gooseneck jack on there. Your spare tires located to the left. You get an aluminum wheel with it. It's not four aluminums on the ground and then a steel for your spare. You get the actual aluminum. And one thing that I feel like the way that these Cimarron's pull so well, and I hear that time and time again from customers is, I think some of it has to do with the nose length on these. They're 8.2 compared to a lot of the standards that are 7.6, 7.8. Absolutely. I think it, it helps with the pulling, the turning on the trucks. You've just got more room. You can let the tailgates down on them when we do that. So our 8 foot 2 inch nose is standard on that. And, and you're right, CJ, a lot of the competitors out there are 7.6 or 7 foot 8 inch nose. Yeah. And, and like you said, with tailgate down, I mean, we can take a long box 
truck and put a tailgate down and I can walk between that spare and that that tailgate. Most of the time it's right up against the Absolutely. spare. Uh, it, boy, it just makes a big difference as far as that's concerned. And one of the other things in today's market with these new trucks and the bed heights on them. So Fords and Dodges have always been kind of notorious the last few years, but now all of a sudden these new body style GMs are two inches taller. Yes. So one thing we noticed was with a 50 inch gooseneck drop that's been standard for so long, we were having issues with trailers running level and bed clearance. And what did we do here? Absolutely, on this, we've added three inches to this drop wall. Three inches doesn't sound like much, but as CJ said, when that bed is two inches taller, before when that thing was low 50 inches was good now we've added another inch above that and made it so why does it matter if your trailer runs level right who cares well when you distribute the load on these axles any trailer manufacturer those axles should run level it distributes the weight equally so what you're going to see in trailers out there if you look at older trailers that run high like that the back tires are wearing faster than the front ones bearings are wearing out on the back axles so we want to make sure this trailer sets level and with adding that three inches here allows us to still give you that proper clearance you know i always measure with my hand put it in there and just make sure it's okay but that trailer runs level now the axles and tires are going to last longer and run even like they should yeah and we're not you know we'll never say never i mean there's always a chance you could get into the better your pickup uh, but by doing this now the chances have drastically reduced because now we can make this trailer run level and again that bed clearance on a trailer like this I shoot, I mean, minimum is about a six and a half inch, but yep. typically I do the same thing. I wanna put my pinky on the bed and maybe just graze the bottom of this. That's about eight, eight and a half inches right in there. That is a good amount of bed clearance for you at these new trucks. And Absolutely. we continue to see it. And that's a good homework project for you is, look at new trucks hauling older trailers. One of two things is happening. It's either nosed up and running on the back axle or, or it's running level and has got about that much bed clearance. And these trucks are expensive, yes, and that bed are. is expensive when you tear it up. So, absolutely. So, again, that's one thing that we kind of have been doing the last couple of years is this 53 inch gooseneck drop. And that was one of the things when we were talking is saying, hey, we need to make this a standard option. And we'll take it a case by case basis on other trailers. Yes. Air ride, 17 half inch wheels or bigger, those type of things come into play where maybe we don't have to do that 53 inch gooseneck drop. Correct. So, yeah, so let's kind of work into this tack room. Um, again, this one's a four foot straight wall. So one of the other things that we were discussing is, is this step. I mean, we were big advocates on putting these steps on these trailers because we, in inventory, just continue to add them to everything we have coming. Because if you step and look, and you can probably see it on camera, from where we're at to right here, that's a big step. And now imagine hauling a big saddle with you going up that. Having that step right there is a massive improvement and just ease of using this trailer. We wanted that step on every one. We had the option to have running board run all the way. Yeah. That's a bigger step. Also that running board, if it's wet or muddy, that is slick. Mm -hmm. And if you've got the, a big heavy Western style saddle in your hands and climbing up there, it's kind of a hazard. So with this step, it's a lot safer. Uh, you don't have to worry about slipping or sliding around. Yeah, absolutely. So come with me here. We'll take a look at this tack room. Again, we did a four foot straight wall. We've got some slant walls on order as well. Uh, so as far as options in here, you know, nothing too crazy in here, you know, very basic, but again, how we want it. If you look over to the left hand side, driver's side, you'll notice this tray up here. That's gonna be storage for our plexiglass in this trailer that we optioned into it. Uh, we really like the plexiglass glass options, you know, so if you're running in colder weather, you wanna seal up the trailer a little bit more. Obviously in summertime, a little bit more airflow, you can do that. But this is a great place to put it. Rather than just throwing it loose up here on this, on this gooseneck deck where maybe something gets thrown on top of it and you're breaking it, now we've actually got a home for it. Now, in my opinion, and if you watch our videos, I preach this all the time, a roll of masking tape, painter's tape, and a Sharpie. That's what you need to keep because there is nothing more frustrating than trying to put plexiglass in a trailer, especially when we're dealing with maybe like a slant wall. Now, granted, this has an escape door that we'll show you here, but there's different sizes and in different measurements. So when we need to go ahead and put that back, boy, it saves a lot of hassle by just being able to grab up here and pull out what's taped together that says driver side upper, driver side lower. I know those are the pieces and where they go. Again, it saves a lot of hassle from that standpoint. 
So that's a great storage tray up there. Over on the right hand side, you'll notice a clothes bar. So if you've got some clothes you're traveling with, you can hang them up there, kind of get them up out of the way. Next to me is a removable post with a four tier saddle rack. So these are all adjustable as well. So if we wanted to add, we wanted to space them, whatever we wanted to do, you can literally just break them loose, loosen them up, slide them up and down, go out the top. I can literally lift this thing out and take it out if I want. Very easy to use as far as that's concerned. And then we have a set of two sets of three bridle hooks up here with carpet behind it. We really like having carpet behind these because one, we don't have that tack literally rubbing against this wall and that aluminum when we're traveling. And also it creates noise for whatever we're carrying on the back side of this. But we've got some straight wall and slant wall options in these 20 and 24 foot combo options. Directly behind it is gonna be our escape door. It's got plexiglass in it as well. But if you need to hop into this stall area, you've got the option there. Again, talking about this plexiglass is you guys actually go ahead and put this track on every single stock trailer with these air gaps. Yes, all of our Lone Star models, which are stock trailers, we put the track there standard on every one. Um, some people don't want to order it with the plexiglass inserts, but you want to be able to do that down the road uh, instead of having to take it to a shop and having this track welded on or bolted yeah. on or screwed on. This comes standard on every one of them. And one of the next things is how you get this plexiglass in and out. We don't want you to have to worry about taking and carrying tools with you and undoing the screws and pulling a piece off and pulling everything out the back. So if you'll see, these have a split and a cutout in the track so you can just take them out by hand. Yeah. And it's real simple. Uh, and the idea with the tape and the Sharpie is great because very frustrating. So, it it yes. is very frustrating. I mean, I, I had an instant, instance here a couple of weeks back on a used trailer that showed up. They didn't have the plexiglass. And I was out here for, I mean, almost a half hour fighting it. I yeah. probably said some real bad words. <laughs> Thankfully, no one was out here with me. It was a hot Saturday. And when I got done, I'm like, it is. It only makes Absolutely. sense. So, <laughs> One of the things, too, CJ, since we're here with the yeah. axles on, that I wanted to let everybody know that all of the trailers uh, in this range that we're building out of that plant all have 10-ply load range E tires, and they're all Goodyear brands. So uh, you're going to have good tires on there, good rubber. Nobody likes to have tire issues on the road. It's, it's a pain in the butt. It's dangerous. So uh, all of these are going to be equipped with Goodyear tires. Absolutely. And as you can see, the aluminum wheels, they're nitrogen filled as well. Um, now this fender, this is a bolt-on fender. Now, as far as the competition out there with weld-ons is, there is definitely some major benefits to these bolt-ons. And one of the biggest things is, is if we have an issue, whether it's caused by a tire or a sharp turn or some road debris or something, if it tears up one of these fenders, these are bolt-on, so not weld-on. So that's gonna save money as far as swapping this out. Because if it's a weld-on, you gotta cut it off, Put a new one on, weld it on. Well, this is bolt on and off. So it's a lot simpler process and should be saving you a little bit of money if you're gonna have to go through that type and of thing. And it is, it, we understand accidents happen, but we want to make it easy to, to get your trailer back to new condition and keep it look like you want, simple. If you're mechanically minded, you can do that at your barn or ranch. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, let's step in here to the stall area. We'll talk about the rear gate here in a minute, but we'll talk about what we got going on in here. So like we mentioned, this is 20 foot on the floor. So we have a four foot front tack with a 16 foot stall area. We've got a center cut gate here, splitting it in half. So we've got two eight foot sections in here. Um, Anthony, tell them a little bit about this floor I'm standing on. No, it, it, it's pro, you know, I get asked all the time working with Cimarron, why should I buy a Cimarron trailer? And, and I could talk all day and bore you, why I should buy a Cimarron? But I typically like to tell them about two things. And the first one is our floor. Um, I'm gonna make a statement, then I'm gonna justify it. It is the best floor in the industry. It is a deck floor system that runs left to right, east to west, however you wanna say it. And there are 12 inch deck boards. They are a tongue and groove joint. So where they go together, a tongue and groove joint, 
but like some of our other competition that uses a deck board with a single tongue and groove joint, CJ, this has two, one at yes. the top and one at the bottom. The reason that's such a big deal is one joint, and it's gonna be hard to believe, but can actually move a little bit. Mm -hmm. And when an aluminum trader flexes, it can move. With two joints, it eliminates and cuts that movement almost in 80% yeah. compared to the other one. So then the cross members are on every four inches. So every four inches, there's a cross member so if you think about that, the size of your horse's hoof, in a Cimarron trailer, wherever he stands, he's gonna be standing on support. And that's a big deal. Some of the trailers that have bigger spacing, as that trailer gets aged, it will actually dip or valley in between those cross members and they're kind of standing in a low spot. Urine and manure can puddle there, which can cause problems with the floor and everything. And then what really just solidifies that for is the two middle cross members are put together in a V, okay? So one of the strongest shapes out there is a V. So when you do that, you've got a V core there that again, engineered wise, is added strength to that floor. So I don't know that you're gonna find a better floor out there, yeah. CJ. No, and, and I say the same thing, and you've hit on the exact same things I do. Hoof size of a horse, just imagine that. Uh, you throw some cattle on here, same thing. I mean, it, it is the industry's best floor out there, and again, there's validity to it when we break it down and show them. And, and, I, and it is a big thing. I mean, obviously we carry used trailers here. We take trade-ins, we do buy trailers. So, you know, when we bring them in, we see the quality over time of different manufacturers. And you do, you get those pits, those valleys in those trailers because there, aren't, there isn't those support beams there. And then what does that floor look like from a corrosion standpoint? What do we need to do there to make it right and safe? Um, but in my opinion, you're, you're right. It, one of the very first things you can do on an all, to determine quality of a trailer, in my opinion, get on your hands and knees and crawl underneath and look at that floor from the bottom side. That'll tell you a lot about how that trailer is manufactured and the overall quality of it. Absolutely. It, that's how... So when you look at a house, when you go to buy a house, what are you, you're looking at the bones, you're looking at the footer, yeah. the foundation. Take the time, get an old pair of jeans when you go trailer shopping and crawl underneath these things and look at it. And I, it, you just will stack a Cimarron up against anybody. It, it, I want a good floor. And when you look at, you hit it, CJ, look at an old used trailer. Go look at a 18 year old of different brands you're thinking about getting and look at those floors, pull the mats, that'll tell the story. Yep, absolutely. Now, obviously there's instances where it, a lot of it determines on Care how it was cared for. <laughs> but again, if you have that quality product and you take care of it over time, there is no different going to spend a lot of money on a custom saddle and taking care of it. It'll last absolutely. you a lifetime. I mean, yep. it truly will. And that's, that's what we're looking at here. So, um, but as far as one of the other things, I'm sure your other thing that you hit on is that roof. Right here, uh, Cimarron uses an insulated roof standard on every trailer we build, okay? That, that roof board is a half inch thick and it's a composite honeycomb core in the middle and then fiberglass on the top and bottom. The top has UV protection on it, so out in the sun, you're not gonna have any issues with that. Here's the cool part. It has an R3 insulation value. You can walk in the back of this trailer without a thermometer on a 90 plus temperature day and feel the difference. Um, I've done testing with just hand thermometers, with laser thermometers, uh, and you get readings anywhere from seven to 10 degrees cooler in the back of a Cimarron than other trailers. And it's all because of that roof. The next thing is it's strong. So it actually had structure to this trailer from a side and racking standpoint. This is rated to carry 150 pounds per square foot. That's a strong board, Yeah. okay? That's a strong board. The next thing it is it's quiet, okay? Uh, trailers that use an aluminum skin type roof system, as that trailer ages, that aluminum gets loose and it'll make a warble sound as it's going down the road. You can actually see it move and it's noisy. If you ride in the back of a Cimarron, there's no noise from that roof. Um, yeah, Anthony, that's all great, but does it really make that much of a difference? Um, I'm 6'3". Where's a horse's head? He's that far yeah. from the roof in his ears. So again, you go compare an aluminum skin roof on a 90 to 100 degree day and touch that with your hand. It's hot yes. in their heads right that. 
you can touch this, you're not gonna get burnt, it's not hot. No. Uh, again, floor, roof, you're probably done shopping in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and I think you hit on it. One of the, th one of the stories I heard from, from Bill Hammond, it's, I don't know how many trailers <laughs> he sold for, for Transwest and for Cimarron, but Bill Hammond had some mule customers and they said those mules will hop in a trailer. And you think about the height and the ears of them. Those mules will have their ears pinned back. And when they get in, they put their ears up and touch that roof. And on those aluminum trailers, they constantly have to ride with their, their ears down. Exactly. But on these, they'll get in, they'll touch that Cimarron roof, and they have no problem, ears up, traveling. So it's little things like that. And it is. I mean, mm -hmm. if you catch us at some summer shows where it's really hot and we're usually out on asphalt, have an easy up tent outside with fans, but it's cooler in the trailer. Heat of the day, we'll be sitting, we'll move our chairs into the trailer and sit there. Absolutely. Because it's that much cooler than even out there with some air movement and under a tent. I mean, it, it does make a difference. And I love bringing customers to the lot. I'm not a fan of heat, I'm not. <laughs> I'm a ginger, I, I, I burn easy, and I'm just not a fan of it. But I will take them to a, a competitor with an aluminum roof on a hot day, a horse trailer that's all sealed up, and you feel that heat in there. And then I'll walk them over to Cimarron and step in there and you feel a massive difference. Like you said, that seven, 10 degrees difference. So you think about somebody that's 200 pounds versus a 900 to 1200 pound horse, the amount of heat we put off versus what they put off, yeah. think of how much more comfortable, comfortable it's gonna be for them in yeah. the back of here. So. And, and this is kind of, we're kind of spinning off it a little bit, but on our show cattle trailers, you know, those are usually low profile trailers. So the very first ones that were built, a lot of them like the Kirk Steerwalt models were six, eight tall, that was standard. But then they realized because of this roof, what we were trying to do is we we're trying to get the heat away from the cattle. That's why it was a little bit taller is because heat rises. Well, then we found out, well, we don't have to have it as tall. We can actually cut it down a little bit. So we build a lot of six, four, so we can actually cut those trailers even down a little bit more. Some sleeker, less wind drag. Absolutely. So um, as far as in this, I mean, obviously we have some LED lights in here. These are the Optibrites. We're a big fan of those. We're big advocates to put them on these. We like putting them on all of our inventory trailers. They just put out a ton of lighting, not a big power draw. Um, and then also, one of the things because of the plexiglass in here is obviously if you're running plexiglass and you need to tie somebody up, well, I can't throw a lead rope around this post right here. So standard on these Lone Stars is this interior tie rail. I love this tie rail because now we can actually tie to it with the plexiglass in. It runs between the two air gaps on both sides of this trailer. Both sides is key, so you can do everything. And we even put that tie rail on the escape door as yep, well. Absolutely. And then we've got, again, the center gate. It's on a slam latch. The other cool thing about this is, is this is a heavy UHMW plastic paddle latch right here. It does have a lock so I can pin it in there so it won't, uh, you know, be able to open as far as that's concerned. But the big thing is, is no metal to metal contact. Metal to metal contact will rattle. It'll create noise in these stall areas. So Cimarron's done a great job on putting that in there so we don't have that. And there actually is a release that we'll show you when we get to the driver's side of this from the exterior of this trailer. And then on the back gate here, we've got a rear gate with the slider on it. So again, if you need to hop something up, you wanna butt up against an alleyway, you've got the, the capability to do that. Uh, right here is all these light switches too, and they're all individual. So if we wanted to run exterior lights, interior lights, um, every one of them's on an individual switch, rather than, hey, just one for the exterior, one for the interior. I mean, I can literally just determine what light I want on, because let's be honest, we've all gotten home in the middle of the night, and you want some light coverage or pull in somewhere late at night, it's nice to have all that. And standard on this is one over the left-hand side, one over the right-hand yeah. side, one at the rear. Yep. All and the exterior lighting on this trailer is LED as well as the interior. Uh, so again, less amp draw on your Absolutely. tow vehicle and they're brighter. Absolutely. So here on driver's side, here's that release right on the exterior for that center gate. So again, now if that pins in there, you can't release it from out here, but uh, if that pins in its kind of just storage position, not locked, you can actually release it right here, open up that center. There's your plexiglass, 
There's your 16 inch awning light. Uh, I really like those awning lights because they're not the pedestal lights that, hey, to be honest, can get knocked off by a tree. I mean, not to say again, that never can happen, right. but again, we've reduced the odds of that drastically. Reduced the odds of it and, and just a sleeker look, uh, same light output, uh, just, just a better light all around. Absolutely. Then we've got the white sheeting, that's standard on Cimarron's. Uh, we can do some other colors, the silver metallic, charcoal metallic, black, black uh, you know, champagne. There's, there's those type of options out there. Uh, champagne is not an option. On the ones coming on, from on the Kansas. Ones. Now, yeah. obviously we can do that Chickasha. Absolutely. And that may evolve down the road, but Absolutely. those are, are, are more popular are the white, the silver, the charcoal, and the black. And that's the that's reason, white. again, feedback from our dealers said, hey, we would like to offer these colors. Absolutely. So this trailer is available today. It's pretty rare Very <laughs> in today's rare. market, <laughs> but this one is available. So if you are interested in it, I'll give you the stock number on it. That way you can give us a call. Again, we've got others on order. We can build you something completely custom if you want, but if this is a trailer your rent is interested in, again, it's a 2023 Cimarron Lone Star 20 foot stock combo, five in, 220, six seven four again we do take trade-ins you got a trailer sitting around you want to turn it into cash we do buy trailers as well anthony we appreciate you coming in spending some time with us walking through this trailer giving us a little background on it as well love it enjoy what trans west does for us and uh, appreciate all your hard work and uh very excited that our second facility is up and running and you guys all got to see the first one yeah, absolutely so give us a call that number is 303 684-3400. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good day.